Hello, this is a note about a special, or two, actually two special online services that help us with learning and reading electronic navigation charts, the ENCs. And I want to uh, talk about that, but before explaining those online catalogs, uh, just a quick reminder of uh, what we're talking about here. So here is a here is an electronic navigation chart, and here's a buoy. Here's a buoy, and then what that might look like here. You see, if we're used to looking at this on a uh, on a paper chart, it would look uh, that would be the symbol like this. But when you go over to electronic charts, it would look like this. It's a different type of symbol. This I'm using. Uh, I'm actually using here OpenCPN. That's a charting program that we use in our coastal navigation course. We also use a different one, which I'll show in a moment for our weather course. But then when you had to read these charts, you would you go up here with your mouse and then you right click it and say object query or something equivalent. And that pops up a list of the properties of that object that we clicked. Now, and, in, and it separates them. So you know, in the, in the paper chart world, we have lighted buoys. But in the ENC world, we don't have lighted buoys. We have lights and we have buoys, and they and we don't have bell buoys. We have a we have a fog signal, and it has a category of the fog signal's bell. So the what all objects, everything printed on a chart in an ENC chart is called an object, and each of these objects has multiple attributes, and each of the attributes has multiple values. And that's, that's what I want to illustrate here. For example, here is a tower. Let me go here, object query, and it shows a landmark. It's a tower. The category of the landmark, oh no, object is a landmark. The, uh, the category is a tower, and uh, the function is a clock tower. Uh, let me look at the other program for a moment to show how how these are done similarly. Here, here now, for example, is this guy, and you would say vector chart elements, and we see the and we see the list, uh, landmark, uh, tower, visually conspicuous, that's one of its attributes, a function is a clock tower, you know, and so forth. So we can do that. Now this one, we can actually put, this is a p part of the program, you can actually put pictures in that help you remember things, but there's clearly well, a clock tower like that. So we have these objects and their attributes. And then, but let me just go a little bit deeper here. Let me just see where I want to go here. Here's an article that we recently posted about landmarks, uh, landmarks and uh, on ENC. And so what it does here, and here's a list just to show you why the thing we're going to talk about shortly is so valuable. Here we have an object landmark. It can have a category. These are attributes that it can actually have many more attributes than this. These are just a few key ones that I listed here. It can have a category of a category, and it can have a, its conspicuousness. Is it conspicuous or not conspicuous. Now that's a required attribute, but interestingly enough, the U.S. does not distinguish that. If something is considered not conspicuous, they simply don't put it on an American chart. So on international charts throughout the world, you will see, for example, what is this, a chimney. This black one is a conspicuous chimney, Convis, uh, its conspicuousness is a one, it's conspicuous. If it's not conspicuous, it is brown. Now again, US charts don't do that, or in principle they don't do that. The few that are existing are presumably charting errors. So that's a little bit academic, but every, the required category is a category is a required object, uh, I mean required attribute, and it can be a flare stack, a mast, uh, a monument, for example, that's nine and so forth. And then you go on down its conspicuousness, then you can have a function. It can be a post office tower, it can be a pilot's lookout tower, it could be one of these down here, it's got to be clock tower, it could be a mosque you know, and so forth. And then on down, it has colors. Now, oh, here's another thing. This is now the technicality. If this landmark has more than one color, then it must have a color pattern given. And that's horizontal stripes, vertical stripes. But if it has only one color, obviously that's not there. And then there's a condition. Is it falling apart? That's only if it's not perfect or normal. Then you have a condition. Then you have a status. It's always in use. It's only in the summer 
Uh, what is this? Public service? Uh, Okay, and so forth. And then whether or not, and there's another parameter here, is it conspicuous by radar? Okay, so the idea is that these objects on an ENC chart have multiple, there are multiple objects, and each object has multiple attributes, and each attribute has multiple values. And so now, how do we uh, get around that? Well, oh, let me mention, I don't want to forget to mention our book here. We have a book, book here, on ENCs, electronic, well, electronic navigational charts. So our book will then go in and teach us how to, how to use these charts. Uh, there, it's uh, how to use the charts. That's not the subject now, so I just want to go on. And in the back of that chart, we have a list of all the objects, and we have a list of all the attributes to the objects. So that's in there. And then we also have a section uh, which is uh, electronic charts, chart number one. But there's also a version of this online, which I'm going to show in a moment. So this a, that's a reference tool that we have. Uh, available. So let's go back now to what's online that is the subject of the talk here. And now what do I need a browser? Okay, so here's one of them and I'll do this one first simply because it's the easiest uh, easiest URL to remember s-57.com and s57 may not ring a bell uh, well, it'll start ringing bells when you start working with his ENCs, that's for sure. S57 is the official IHO, International Hydrographic Office. It's the, init it's the, it's the official IHO document that specifies the standards of what is included in an ENC chart. That says what's in the chart. Now that actually, to show the complexities here a little bit, that doesn't tell us how the chart should appear on the screen, on the computer program. That's a different document called S52. And we're not talking about that so much now. We're talking about S57. So anyway, S57 is the web page, www.s57. And you go there, and then you could do, oh, what, what I got here, rock. I got, okay, there is no such thing as a rock. There's no, there's no object called rock anymore. But there is an object called underwater, what's this thing called? Underwater and awash rocks. That's an object. And it has these attributes. And if I can click one here, this is the, uh, uh, the uh, what is it, firm here? Exposition of the sounding. And now that's going to be an interesting number. It's within the range of the, of the, uh, uh, the, depth, of the, of the depth area. In other words, it could be, in other words, there's two soundings. There's two, uh, well, maybe I'm not, shouldn't get into these details at this moment. But there's two depth contours either side of that. And the question is, is this rock have a sounding that's within those two or not within those two ranges? But then there's other the nature of this and uh, the nature of the, um, the nature of the surface of the object. What's the one I want to look at here, the value? No, this one, like water level. And you see that object is, that, that property, not property, they call it attribute. That attribute of the rock is called water level effect, what lev. Now, here's the thing about this, this object catalog here. This one has this sort of nice feature that on, on many of these, uh, in other words, what are these? These are the values, the possible values of the attribute what lev to a water level effect of a rock. And it's see partially submerged, uh, covers and uncovers, and then that we know, that's an asterisk rock. Let me get rid of that. But here's the thing, when you see in this INT1 column an underline, then you can actually go in, let me just, I'll get rid of that. Then you can go in here and see these uh, different values. You, ca you can actually see what it looks like in the printed chart number one. And so let me just back up a minute. This INT1 that they're listing here is actually, let me go back here to, uh, where was it? That would be uh, here. And go to chart number one. In this chart number one, this is a PDF you can download. It is this column here, the international value of the symbol. This is the NOAA, this is how NOAA makes the symbol. This is how the Defense, National Geospatial Agency, the 
Defense Department makes a symbol. This is how NOAA makes a symbol. This is how the international standard is over here for the paper chart symbol. This over on this side is how it appears. They call it ECTUS. They really mean that's the S57, the S57 standard. Ah, oh, excuse me, beep, beep. I made the slip. That's the S52, S52 standard of how that object should appear on the chart. So that's what this, uh, that's what these columns mean. And then when we go back here, uh, here to here, I'm just showing that in this one, in this version. So in this version, you have this little pop-up. And that's not in the other one I'm going to show. And so what you do is you have a list here, like, and I could go into here and put like a landmark. I can put an L, that's as far as I can go. And then I can drop down here to landmark, landmark here. And then see, here's the object category of the landmark, and here's all these things here. And there's a definition for each one of these. See, a definition for each one. Also, when you're using this chart catalog, read the help file here. There's a help file that tells about what they mean, what these codes mean. The codes are slightly different on the other one I'm going to show in a moment. These two help files are identical. So this is a, this is a list of all of the attributes plus the definitions. But you have to, each one has a definition that pops up like this. Okay, so let me go to the other one. This, that, this, this one here, by the way, is from Russia. That's a, on a Russian website. And it has some things that are out, not, not really outdated, but it'll have things like monument, right? So monuments don't exist anymore, but it says do not use. A monument's an outdated term. It's a type. Monument is a category of landmark. Okay, but here now is the other one from Keras. This is an American, a big, big company, American Canadian uh, company. That's a, a very responsible company that makes a lot of these charts and tools related to them. And they have a catalog online. If you're going to use only one, it would probably be this one would be the best to use. But it's interesting to look at both. You may find uh, pros and cons. But this one has all, all laid out here in a row. If I want to get the underwater rocks, I would go here and get it that way. If I want to get back to landmarks, I would click that and go here and find landmarks. And then likewise over here. And then here are the different, like here's the category of the landmark. Here's all the options. Now they have a nicer, well, it's different. You click this, it's not going to just define monument. It's going to give you all the definitions. So you could maybe, you know, put that somewhere if you might want it on your own. And then uh, colors, these are the colors, you know, you can have and so forth. So that's the main function I wanted to do is to explain these online catalogs so you can work with them as you click an object. In other words, this is a way that you learn what all could the chart tell me. Not that the chart's going to tell me that. The particular object I'm looking at, the landmark I'm looking at, or the light, or the beacon. Beacon's a big one to look at. There's all kinds of properties to beacons. And so you could look at this and say, what all can I learn? And you can learn, for example, not just the height of the object. The height of the object is how high it is above mean high water. But you can also learn what's the elevation of the land at that particular point. That's relative to mean sea level. And then they have other parameters like Verlan. I don't see if it's, it's here at all or not. What am I doing? Landmark. Does it have a Verlan? No, it doesn't have a Verland, but if I go to beacon, beacons, I'll have something called Verland, which is the vertical length of the object, which is literally how tall it is above the ground. And then you can have the stripes, the colors, everything. So this way is just, again, this, these tools are just a way to learn what all could I know if, if they had all of these attributes filled in. And I'll stop there. I'm over limit on my time.